Thank you, Brian. Um, my uh, talk was originally entitled New Technologies, as you'll see in your conference programs. It's now called Agricultural Innovation. During the course of our investigations, we found that innovation is a more comprehensive term and better describes the process of bringing things like new technologies into practice. So what do we find? First of all, that innovation is more than just technology. Two, that there have been a shift, in, there's been a shift from a technology push to a demand pull. The users are involved in the process. And thirdly, that the adoption of innovation is a risk management problem. You have to stay profitable to be productive. So let me explain. I could have done one of those talks where I show you nice pretty pictures of some pretty cool technology, uh, very important nevertheless. Some very handy technology, if you're a cow. And some involving the many players in Australian agriculture and innovation. All important. But I wanted to use an approach that was in the spirit of the outlook of this conference and give us some uh, material that hopefully can prepare us for the future. Excuse me. So what is, tech, what is innovation? Innovation is more than just technologies, uh, as I said before. It involves know-how, information, uh, technology and practices. And it's about new and existing uh, information technology and practices and about their adoption. The process of innovation also includes how we go about finding out about these, employing them and then deploying them. So why innovate? Well, innovation is part of the progress of, of improving and hopefully um, progressing. We need to maintain productivity growth in Australian agriculture and innovation has a role in that. It helps us remain profitable, an essential part of any business. Population growth and climate change pressures will mean that we have to do more with less. Future innovations utilising mechanisation and automation, for example, can help create a more industrialised landscape than conventional agriculture. The pipeline is a traditional depiction of innovation. Now there are critics of this, but I want to use it to be able to explain a transformation in innovations over the last 20 years. The pipeline is actually, actually iterative along its process and use, involves many people. In the early 1990s, we were promised things from genetic engineering and microcomputers. On balance, there was a real push of these technologies in the hope that they would be used innovatively. Since then, over the last 20 years, we've seen commercial GMOs in place, GPS, mobile phones, the technology boom has come and been, personal computers are everywhere, the internet, social networking and things like nanotech. And of course, over the last 20 years we've seen the establishment of the Research and Development Corporations, RDCs, for agriculture. And they're investing in strong linkages at the right hand end of this pipeline. Noting always that the left hand side of the pipeline is as and important as ever to provide the fertile grounds for innovation. The GID mission statement best exemplifies this shift to a demand pull from a technology push. They talk about investing in innovations for stakeholders and linking science, technology and commercialisation with industry needs. Users are involved. The funnel rather than the pipeline, we think represents existing, how existing technologies from a range of different disciplines have been brought together in the case of precision agriculture. GPS, for example, was developed for military purposes. It went along its own pipeline originally. Many of the technologies on the left-hand side of the funnel, the larger end of the funnel, have been mainstreamed in the technology and information boom that we're part of right now, or explosion in my diagram. Precision agriculture has drawn from many of these technologies that have come from outside traditional agriculture and has involved farmers making them more practical and profitable. Farmers have been part of adapting and adopting these range of technologies in things like variable rate and guidance systems and using them in innovative ways. 
This is an account from one of the Nuffield scholars who we surveyed, Mark Branson. And it's a very clear example of innovation and demand pull in operation. And this is with precision agriculture. Precision agriculture promises to allow customised management of crops and pastures according to the attributes on the site. The opportunity there is to improve profitability and reduce risks with better control. So in 1995, yield monitors were available on, on equipment and machinery that Mark was buying. But he told us it was hard to see returns for money, but a few keen uh, ones of them persisted. In 2001, GRDC established a project to further prove and look at the usefulness of this technology and was combined with the grower group that Mark was part of um, in helping uh, prove this technology, find out its usefulness and test it. But as Mark said, still only coloured maps showing variation and nothing converting this to profit. However, iteratively over the next five years, employing the technology, adapting the technology back to the technology's developers, Mark was able to tell us that an economic study was showing gains on his property using this technology. They were spreading the word with workshops and farmers to farmer teaching. Now, um, there's a promotion to other regions, including New Zealand, of the benefits of this technology. There's 400 members, expos, etc. And Mark says they're able to efficiently allocate inputs to areas that need them and not waste it, where yield is always limiting. There's innovation in practice. We undertook a survey of 27 Nuffield scholars across the country last month, and it offers some real in insights into innovation, and I'll be uh, drawing from those results over my next couple of slides. The age of these farmers is between 35 and 45, so we're looking at, at a younger, younger bracket. It's a small sample. Uh, it's being taken nationally across broad acre and intensive uh, in enterprises, and I thank them for their participation, because in the midst of the floods, the cyclones and the droughts, they were able to reply to our survey. So this graph t shows the top six um, information sources that they said they were using to draw uh, information on new technologies and innovations. 20 years ago, you wouldn't have seen things on here like internet and RDCs, and you certainly see less of the private as opposed to public consultants and agronomists. But some things are always going to m remain the same like other farmers and media. When asked what are they using right now, they talked about soil and crop management, precision agriculture and new machinery. The survey resu results show adoption of these technologies and practices and combining them into even more innovative practices. This is consistent with what's happening uh, more broadly through um, the borrowing for investment directed at land, machinery and infrastructure despite farm incomes being low over the recent years. I've extracted that from the March Australian Commodities. When asked what they're considering, in the future they're considering more high technologies like automation, using tools like genetic modification to adapt to climate change and sticking to the fundamentals of livestock, crops and soils. Slightly different twist was when we asked them what they wanted. This could possibly be a wish list. Remote technologies and automation were common themes. Many farmers would like to remotely control and automate repetitive tasks and monitoring functions. Reduce labour costs and free up their time to manage other parts of their farms. Another common desire was the integration of multiple technologies and the explosion of data that's occurring. Better manage variables and increase outputs and reduce inputs and waste. Help them adapt to mit and mitigate climate change were also popular, such as measurement and making money out of soil carbon. I've jumped ahead, haven't I? Non-production innovations that they wanted included uh, some to reduce risk and maximise returns through business management, recognising demographic change and competition for labour, what be, can be done for the ageing popula uh, farming population and training more agricultural scientists were what was responded to us. 
vertical integration of businesses and value adding feature. Research and development investment is still there. This risk return framework uh, from Brian Keating and colleagues at CSIRO and ABARES I find helpful in identifying types of new technologies and innovations that will be required over the next 20 years to maintain productivity growth. To stay profitable, farmers will be utilising breakthroughs. The lines depict efficiency frontiers, the solid line is now, and the dotted line is a result of breakthroughs to new technologies. And I'll go through the B to D and D to C and so forth in the next couple of slides. The first way that farmers can improve is to remove system inefficiencies and approach the current efficiency frontiers, such as through drought, um, becoming more self-resilient to drought and climate change and farm consolidation. Investment in breakthrough technologies which increase resource use efficiency, in other words, reduce risk and maintain returns through the wider adoption of precision agriculture and the use of information and communication technologies. And the third way is through the investment in breakthrough technologies that offer greater gains, such as genetically modified crops and this thing called genetics times environment for management revolution, which is targeting genetics and management to specific locations. Vertical integration and new products and services such as biofuels, sequest carbon sequestration and environmental stewardship. So to conclude on inv innovations in the future, there is no doubt that we will continue having to do more with less. Less land, less fertilisers, less water, less reliable climatic conditions. Innovations to help us improve efficiency under limited resources and minimise losses. Climate change will drive the maximising of things like carbon productivity per unit water consumption and maximising net greenhouse gases per unit production. Using innovative control systems and automation will help reduce risk and maximise control. Innovations to continually profitably making more food and sustaining our environment. And importantly, the agricultural innovation process can, includes the involvement and investment of many players across the pipeline or funnel. So to remember the first three things that I told you about. Innovation is more than just technology. The dem demand pull has importance. It involves users and adoption is a risk management problem. Thank you.